So hi, Alistair, it's really, really great that you accepted the position uh, with Dementia Alliance International as our vice chair, um, officially commencing in 2020. Um, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you joined DAI, just to start with? Okay, um, so I live in New Zealand in a town called Napier, which is on the east coast of the North Island. Um, and it's referred to as the fruit bowl of New Zealand. So we uh, have not only a lot of fruit growing here, but also grapes. Um, I was diagnosed in 2014 with younger onset Alzheimer's. Um, and I was a wee bit, I mean, if you can be fortunate as far as with the diagnosis, but my father had Alzheimer's um, and also looking back was diagnosed with younger onset. And I suppose, and we had a business at the time of my diagnosis and there was just a few things that were occurring that were uncharacteristic for me um, that normally would not be an issue. And some of that was around figures and um, sort of big picture stuff and I just was struggling to grapple with it. Um, and there's some other behavioural things. And so I mentioned to my wife that I was suddenly sort of struggling in certain areas and, and a concern that maybe um, was I getting Alzheimer's. So we went to the doctor um, and explained my history and. So she did some tests and so said, you know, it seems fine, uh, but we'll refer you to a neurologist. And so through that, you know, it went through the same thing again. And then we refer got referred to a specialist team with the local hospital here. And um, the further testing, what have you, yeah, eventually um, did receive a d confirmation of diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And yeah, and I sort of say fortunate in that that process um, for me was reasonably good. So the the professionals that we're dealing with were um, quite sympathetic, if you like, and were very good at actually explaining what they were doing and why they were doing it. And even when I was given the diagnosis. Um, yeah, you know, they actually took the time to explain some of the things that may be occurring and what is they're experiencing. And when I look back now, I mean, it just probably highlights how critical that 12 months following a diagnosis is, as far as getting the right support in place and what have you. Because there certainly were a lot of things that I experienced after that diagnosis. I mean, it was still a shock to receive it, but. Um, yeah, when I look back, it was just coming to terms with it. And so, and one of the reasons I sort of joined DAI was that I was looking, even though there were there was good support services here in Napier, and which I have utilised and still continue to do so, is that um, I was really just looking for something else in addition to that. And, and DAI uh, provide the peers to peer support group. And that was my main reason initially to join DAI and and found it tremendous. That helped to me. Um, I mean, just the biggest thing is probably just talking to other people who have got this, the same condition and mm. and just discussing um, how it impacts on you and suddenly finding, oh, you're not the only one that ex has those experiences. And... Yeah, you know, and the plus side of it is hearing some of the strategies as to how you cope with certain things that are happening. Um, and, and I suppose it was really through DAI that, um, through UK, that encouraged to participate more in advocacy work. And hence, then, why I sort of became involved locally here with Alzheimer's New Zealand. Um, initially on their advisory group and more recently joining their board. Yeah, so it's a, and I think, um, Alice, look, thank you for sharing that. I think your uh, diagnostic experience, which sounds like it was quite positive compared to so many of the stories we hear from 
fellow um, friends now and members of DAI who often have uh, um, less positive experience with diagnosis and um, often don't hear about even a local support group, let alone DAI's online support group. Sometimes people don't hear get any support for years. So it's wonderful to hear that um, you, you got support fairly quickly, both locally in Napier um, and also um, found or were referred to DAI. Um, so now that you've become, um, you've been a board member for some time now, but you've um, become very involved in your own country's really national advocacy right up to the level of government now and um, uh, next year you'll officially be a vice chair for DAI. Do you have any thoughts about that that you'd like to share? Any kind of dreams or goals or? Um... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose as far as with DAI, it's, it's really the growth that DAI is experiencing at the moment. And you think, you know, it's only been five years will be six years shortly that it's been operating and where we are now compared to six years ago and i think now we're sort of that you know with any organization it's how you deal with that growth and and certainly you know i can sort of see that we are going to have to make some changes as to how we can mm. continue to provide that support to to our existing members but also to the new members yeah, I, I, and I think, um, as I mentioned at the annual general meeting this week, I mean, John and I are the uh, two of the founding eight, um, and there are um, only six founding members still alive, but we're two, two of the active ones still active with DAI. Um, I, I suspect that neither of us expected it to last, um, and probably the whole world didn't expect yeah. a group run by and for people with dementia to last. But it, it has, miraculously, um, and through a lot of hard work and a lot of support of many, many members. Um, so I think it's, it's really exciting to be heading into 2020 with a new team and with some really fabulous professional volunteers who are going to help us yeah. kind of steer the ship into a new direction to make sure that, number one, we don't... Um, stop that grassroots work that we do, which I think is the most important work we do, and that's to support more newly diagnosed people to get back to living um, yeah. rather than just to stay home. And, you know, so many people talk about that dark place they end up in after diagnosis, um, but also then to somehow find a way to, to um, keep going with the global work as well. Mm. Anything else that you would like to say to maybe new members of DAI or anyone thinking of getting involved? Um, I think the our action group, which is open to any members to to join at any time, mm. is a great way to sort of to get a wee bit more involved with DAI and and just see what areas um, that DAI is actually working in. And you know, and I mean, we've got a very good board at the moment, and and yeah. have had in the past too. And uh, so I look forward not only working with you, Kate, but uh, with the board. Yeah, no, it's exciting times ahead. Thanks, yes. Alice, dear. That's wonderful. Thank you.